okay, I'm just going to give a summary of the delta function. So the delta function is something that is an idealized function, and it is zero everywhere except for the center of the function. In this case, it's zero. Um, so delta t exists at zero. It's infinitely narrow, but also infinitely high, and the ratio is such that the area equals one. So that's the important thing. It's an idealized function where the area equals one, even though it's infinitesimally narrow. So what does that mean in mathematics? If we integrated the delta function to t, that means add up the area for all values across from minus infinity to infinity of t, then it's zero everywhere here. It's equal to one exactly at zero, and then it's zero everywhere here. So this would equal one. Okay, what if we shift the delta function? Well, a shifted delta function, let's, uh, and we can also shift it and give it a height. So this just means if we give it a height different to one. The delta function is defined as having a height of one, which means an area of one. We could give it a height of a, which means by definition an area of a, even though it's infinitesimally narrow. Okay, so this is delta t minus five, let's say. So that this moves the delta function to here. And how do we know that? Well, the thing in the brackets, when t minus five equals zero, then the thing in the brackets equals zero, and you'll have that point on the graph. So we look down here and we say, when does the thing in the brackets equal zero? It's when t minus five equals zero. So that means when t equals five, so that's here. So that point has moved to here. That's the way that I think about the movement of functions. Okay, I look at what the thing in the brackets and where the interesting points of the original function have moved to. Okay, so when the thing in the brackets, just to repeat it, when the thing in the brackets equals zero, that's, you're going to have the delta function. So we look down here, we're now plotting delta of t minus five. The thing in the brackets has to equal zero for that, for the place of that delta function, and that means t equals five. Okay, so what if we added up the area of this function? So this is a times delta t minus five. In this case, uh, this is this function, uh, a times delta t minus five. Uh, and this then equals, well, it's multiplying a, comes out of the integral. This is to t over time. Uh, a comes out of the integral, and then we've just got, again, zero everywhere. We're adding up from negative infinity to infinity, zero everywhere except for here at one place, and the area equals one, so it's one times a, which is a. Okay, so what if we had another function, yt, and what if that was equal to the first function times the second one? So delta t times delta t minus five times a. So this is a, a new function, it's just these first two functions multiplied by each other. What if we integrated those and said adding up over here, we've got a, times delta t times delta t minus five. And if you just looked at that, you might uh, start to get a bit confused. You have to probably really understand the mathematics of this and be thinking in mathematical terms, but I prefer to think in graphical terms and I encourage you to do the same. So what are these, let's plot these functions and then think about how we're gonna add up the area underneath them. So the first one is here, the second one is here. We're multiplying the two together. So what you notice is everywhere there, there's a zero in one of them, the answer will be zero. Okay, for all the values of t where there's a zero in either of these, you're gonna get zero contribution to the area. Okay, so in this case here, it's zero everywhere here. It's, in fact, there's only two places where either of them is not equal to zero. And I think we can clearly see that when this one's not equal to zero, this one is. And when this one's not equal to zero, this one is. Okay, so this actually is zero when you multiply these two functions together, even though they're delta functions, you multiply them together, it's zero everywhere. So adding up the area is zero. So there's just one more that I want to show you, and that's if we have a general function, let's say we had another function of time, and let's say this was uh, xt, then what would be the answer to if we multiplied the, for example, the second delta function with xt. So let's say we had xt times a times delta t minus five. And let's say we added, we wanted to know the integral of this. 
Okay, so again, let's think graphically. Xt is here, it's multiplied by this function here, and then we're adding up the area. So everywhere where this is zero, it's going to multiply the x by zero, so that's zero. So there's only one place where you're going to get any contribution at all, and that's at time equals five, and you're going to get the height of a multiplied by that value there. So that value there is x at 5. It's a number. It's the number that this function takes at time t equals 5. So if we look over here, this delta function picks out the value. One way of thinking of it is it picks out the value of x at the time when the delta function exists. Okay, so this integral equals a times x of 5. That's a number, so it can come out of the integral, and then you've just got the integral uh, which is um, which gives you the, the function a.